Hello, and welcome to this video on kinematics. In this video, I'm going to explain what kinematics is, what it deals with. Then I'm going to present some results in the special case of constant acceleration, and then we'll go ahead and use those results to do an example. So, uh, jumping right in, kinematics is a small part of physics that deals with a very simple question um, compared to the rest of physics, which is, it just wants to make a simple prediction of how a system will behave. And it doesn't care about why, and it doesn't care about how, it just wants to know what will a system do. So, what kind of motion are we going to see, what speed will it have, what acceleration, and where will it be at a given time. So the variables of interest in this case are exactly what I've just said. There's a position vector x that describes where some object is. We want to know how fast does that position change. That's the velocity vector, the time rate of change of position. And we want to know something about how much acceleration is going on. That is the time rate of change of that velocity vector. Given just these simple things, we can go ahead and make predictions about future positions, velocities, accelerations, etc. Okay, now in order to really do that, um, it all does depend on what those are as a function of time. But in one special case, it becomes really trivial and really simple. And that special case is, suppose that the acceleration, rather than being free to be whatever it likes, some arbitrary function of time, is just constant. So it's always 0.5 meters per second squared north, or something like that. If it's constant, then we reduce the whole question to basically three simple equations. The first one tells you exactly how the position evolves as a function of time. It says that the, function, uh, the position at some time, t, is just the initial position x0 plus the initial velocity v0 times time plus 1 half the acceleration, which is constant, so I haven't bothered to put a zero on that, times t squared, the time squared. Okay, and that's just going to give you the position. It's that simple. So always know at any time where that particle is, or that object. Okay, you can also say how fast it's going just by saying, oh, look, it's going to be v0 plus the acceleration times the time. And then, maybe you don't care about what time it is. Maybe you would like to talk about the velocity as a function of position. In that case, you can interrelate them by this simple equation. The velocity at position x is v, and it's given by v squared is equal to the initial velocity squared plus twice the acceleration times the change in position. And the change in position is just x minus x naught. So that delta x there is representing x minus x naught. Now, if a picture is worth a thousand words, an example is worth a million. So let's do an example and make sure we understand what's going on with those equations. Okay, the example we'll take is this question here. Suppose we've got some remote controlled car and its brakes are capable of supplying an acceleration of negative 0.5 meters per second squared. It's a nice constant acceleration. And the negative sign is telling me it's really a deceleration or more importantly, it's just against the direction of whatever the direction of the velocity is. Okay. Then we're told that the car begins to stop, uh, applies its brakes at a time of zero seconds, and it finishes stopping at t equals three. We haven't actually specified the unit, but we'll take it to be seconds. And then we ask, how far has it traveled, and how fast was it going initially? Well, okay, first thing, what do we know? We've got to think through this. Well, we're looking at this question. It is, in fact, constant acceleration. We're told one single number, not changing, negative 0.5 meters per second squared. So we've got a constant acceleration problem, which immediately puts those three equations into play. So these are going to apply, and they're going to be what we need to use to find some answers to these questions. All right. Well, let's take a look at what are these variables we know. So what are the variables? Well, there's an x, there's a v, there's an a, there's a corresponding x0, a v0, and, well, a0, but a is equal to a, so we're just going to leave that there. And, of course, there's time. 
And really, I put the time over here rather than over there. So thinking about that, we need to ask ourselves, which of these do we know? OK, and I'll just move the A back over to the other side since it's constant. So in that case, A is negative 0 0.5 meters per second squared. The initial velocity is actually what we're looking for, or the initial speed now. I'm discarding information about directions because I don't have any to use. The initial position, actually, we're not going to care about. We want to know how far it travels from that initial position. So we'll go ahead and set that to be 0. And then we're interested in knowing how far we end up. And we know, actually, the final velocity at a time of three seconds, because the final velocity says, oh, the car came to a stop. So that's zero meters per second. OK, now looking at our table and at our equations, we see that we've got everything we need in order to immediately solve for v0 by using the second equation. So we take the second equation, v0, and we're not going to use the vector sign because we don't have information on directions. So v0 is going to be what? v minus at. v at the end is 0 because we've come to a stop, minus a negative 0 0.5. Um, I'll put in my units. It's good practice to use your units because they will guide you and help you make sure that you haven't made any mistakes. And times a time of three seconds. So that is 1.5 meters, one of the seconds cancels, so meters per second. And you see my units have worked out to be correct units for speed. That's how my units can help me check what's going on and make sure that I'm doing things correctly. So indeed, I've got the initial speed, 1.5 meters per second, just like that. And now, given this extra bit of information, we see that we can use either equation, actually, to figure out what the final, um, or what the distance traveled is. Rather than have to square 1.5, I'll just use the first equation. So x is supposed to be now, we don't care what x0 was, we just want to change. Plus v0, which is this 1.5 that we just figured out, meters per second times 3 seconds, plus 1 half of the acceleration, which is negative 0 0.5 meters per second squared, and then times the time squared, which is 3 seconds squared. So 1.5 times 3 is 4.5. The seconds cancel, and I've got meters. So that's promising, because I'm looking for a position or a displacement. So that should be in meters. Then I've got here, well, what do I have? I've got 3 squared is going to be 9. 0 0.5 is the same thing as a half times a half is a quarter. Had an overall negative sign. And then as far as units go, well, I had seconds, but I squared them. So that gave me seconds squared, which cancelled with my per second squared. And I've got meters left over. So that's good again. And so I've got 4.5 minus, well, a quarter of 9 is 2.25. And that's all in meters. And so I've got my final answer. It's actually 2.25 meters. OK. So hopefully that makes it clear what you need to know about kinematics, how to use these equations, um, identify constant acceleration, and how to pick and choose which equation to use.